Hello, my name is George. Uh, I am co-founder of Crossover Blendery. Uh, we are a UK-based uh, blendery operation focusing on beers of spontaneous fermentation. Uh, we're based uh, near Stevenage, which is uh, about an hour north of London. Uh, we started the project um, in 2019, but the first wort went into barrel beginning of 2020. So coming up to the end of this year, we'll be four years old. Uh, and I started the business, I started the blendery, and I'm doing what I'm doing now because uh, I absolutely love uh, complex, interesting beers, uh, particularly beers of spontaneous fermentation. Uh, and so, yes, it's a huge passion of mine, and, and that's why I do it. What's your current production level? I mean, so we um, we've probably got about sixty thousand liters in oak. Uh, that's spread across four seasons of brewing. Uh, we're still very small, though. Uh, we've got very small output. Uh, we are increasing our blend sizes. Um, there's more availability of our beer now. Uh, we used to be really, really small. Um, so we are slowly increasing things, uh, but I don't think we're ever going to be big, big. Um, you know, this type of beer takes a long time to make. Uh, and so you've got to be patient and you've really got to let the beer do its, do its thing. Uh, but it's good, you know, I feel like we're getting better at blending. Uh, we're getting more competent with using the fruit, getting the most out of the fruit with our fruit beers. So I, I still feel like we're very early in our journey. You know, we're nearly four years in and I, I think we've got a long way to go, but that's exciting. Where do you get your wort from and where is it fermented? So our, our wort is, uh, it's brewed at Elgood's. Uh, Elgood's are a really old brewery in Cambridgeshire in the UK. Uh, they're the second oldest brewery, I think, in operation. They mostly make car scale. Uh, but the important thing about Elgoods is they have two 4,000 litre copper cooling trays or cool ships. Uh, now we make beers of spontaneous fermentation, so the cooling trays or cool ships are, are vital in the process uh, in terms of when our wort is made. Uh, because as the wort is cooling in the trays, the native yeast and bacteria falls into the wort, and, and that's what sponta spontaneously inoculates our, our wort. So we have a, a really good relationship with Elgoods. We've had four seasons of brewing with them. Uh, after the wort is turned out mid-afternoon into the cooling trays, we then cool it overnight. We brew in the winter. Uh, and then we pick the beer up the next day. Uh, we drive it to our blendery, which is about an hour and a half away from Elgoods. And we'll rack the unfermented beer, the wort, straight into barrel for spontaneous fermentation and maturation. What kind of styles do you look for? Uh, where is your inspiration from? I mean, we're heavily inspired by the, the Lambic producers, of course. Um, you know, we follow uh, similar recipes to the Lambic guys, um, but we do a lot of experimentation with fruit. So we like to focus on British ingredients, uh, British fruits, and we like to find niche, interesting heritage varieties of fruit that people don't really grow anymore, uh, that are difficult to find, because often these fruits are the most complex, the most interesting. Uh, but we are also starting to do more base beers, so beers that are not fruited. Uh, you know, we have a good amount of stock of older beer now, so two, three years plus. This beer is the more complex beer, the more interesting beer, the more rounded beer. So this sort of beer is great for these base beer blends that aren't fruited. And so we're doing more and more of that now, which I'm really, really interested in. But most of what we do are the, the fruit beers, which are acidic, they're dry, they're interesting. It's kind of more what the, the market wants. What led you to this? Um, so my, myself and my business partner, Charlie, uh, funnily enough, a friend's dad used to bring uh, Canton Gers back to England when we were much younger. Like not really old enough to drink sort of age. So we used to try, you know, initially it was like, what the hell is this? But, you know, it, it, we very quickly, it opened our minds to what beer could be, you know, and, and not just Lambic, but all types of beer. Uh, but fast forward many, many, many years, you know, we found ourselves most interested in, in beers of a spontaneous fermentation and Lambic and Gers. And, 
you know, we, we always wanted to do a project like this, but we were never going to go and make lagers or parallels or IPAs. It's not really, it doesn't really interest us, but, but these beers really, really do. So, so that's why we decided to do this project and start focusing on making beers of spontaneous fermentation. Because uh, I, I, I feel like they, there's never been more interesting beer around, but I, I still feel like these spontaneously fermented beers are, are un, unparalleled in the uh, depth of flavor and complexity. Uh, and that's what really interests me and Charlie, and that, that's why we make these beers. Are they accepting the British style or, and uh, the evolution of what you, you're yeah. in terms of the style? I mean, I think yes and no. It's, you know, it's, it's quite widely accepted in the craft beer community. Um, I think outside of that, it's obviously a challenge. You know, normal consumers are not used to these types of flavors. Uh, a lot of normal consumers may be drinking macro lagers. Um, they may not be that interested in flavors and aromas. So, you know, we have a tap room. We get a lot of normal customers who aren't beer fans, who aren't wine fans, who are just coming in for a drink. And often the reactions can be, you know, not necessarily always positive but i feel like the more you drink these beers uh, and the more you allow your brain the time to adjust to realize that a beer can actually taste like this i think it, it can be liked by everyone of course people aren't going to like it but anything you consume is subjective so people will like stuff and not like stuff that's how it is but but you know it's slowly getting there i think and there aren't that many producers in the uk doing it uh, we're a really, really, really small part of a small market, uh, but it's slowly growing. And you know, there's an international audience for this stuff as well. There are small markets all around the world, and I think that allows for uh, you know this type of beer to be made and be consumed, and for people like ourselves to exist. Uh, and of course, like it isn't going to be a beer for everyone, and we don't expect it to be a beer for everyone, but. Uh, I feel like if people are interested and open to trying, it, it really can be a beer for, for them. Where do you go from here? Do you want to grow bigger than you are? Like, we'll slowly grow, um, like try and get more interesting blends out. I think stop doing really crazy blends with really niche fruit. We've done some like, really because we're really interested in fruit, we've done some like crazy niche stuff that no one knows of. And obviously it's quite difficult to sell something that no one's ever heard of. but. Yeah, I think just keep focusing on what we're doing. Keep trying to get the blends better. Keep trying to learn more and more when we're blending. Uh, you know, every year we use the fruit, it's different and not just the growing season and the fruit being different in terms of varying qualities, but you know, how we use the fruit, how we try and get the most out of the fruit. You know, it differs every year. And, you know, I still feel like we have so much to learn in, in that regard. Uh, I'm really happy with where the beers are at, but I also know we've got more to do to get them better you know i mean i don't think anyone's in the uk really knows what we're doing and the whole like, like the blendery idea i mean yeah we, we could have maybe named it something else but we thought it's the most accurate description of what we're doing we stayed honest. yeah and it's exactly we're, we're not brewers i'm not a brewer i've never pretended to be a brewer neither is my business partner charlie you know we're beer blenders and we couldn't really think of a more apt or appropriate name to call it than a blendery, uh, and that, that is what it is. And of course, it's a nod to the, the people who have inspired us. It's a conversation starter for people as well who don't know what it is, you know? And we spend a lot of time speaking to customers, particularly in our tap room, explaining the process because these sort of beers, they need to be explained. They deserve an ex explanation, not only from a flavor and aroma perspective, but the whole process and why something tastes like it does. Uh, and that, goes for blendery that goes for the process that goes for the flavors um, but people are interested in that I think more so than we're just a brewery and we're making this type of beer you know it's maybe less engaging for your random person I, I don't know oh, it's uh, a great story yeah we love it and great thanks for talking to the beer readers. no worries my pleasure Enjoy your story awesome thank you for trying my beer <laughs> yeah thank you